What's up guys, welcome to today's vlog. So on the vlog, what we're gonna be focusing on is a bob haircut. Now this bob haircut, I like because it's got a ton of layers, a ton of texture. We go in, we do a lot of point cutting at the end. And also we create these hard lines throughout the entire cut. We create a nice hard fringe, same thing in the back. So I'm gonna show you guys techniques on how to create those hard lines during the dry haircut. So hope you guys like this video. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. Let's get started. All right guys, so I'm gonna start off the cut by brushing back the mannequin or your guest's hair. And I'm using my Ergo Diamond Head Brush. This is a brand new brush that we have on freesaloneducation.com. And the thing that I love about this, why this is my new favorite brush, is because I always love using a paddle brush because I love the tension, I love how it detangles. But the Ergo Diamond Head Brush is a smaller version of a paddle brush. So I use that, it's great to get through the hair, it's great for medium to shorter length hair. So my sectioning is very simple for this cut. I go straight down center, all the way down center back to the nape. Then I go from mid crown down to behind the ear with a slight diagonal forward parting. And then I go from the occipital bone down to behind the ear. So basically creating three different pie shaped sections throughout the head. And what this is gonna do is just it keeps everything sectioned off and organized for me as I move forward in the cut. This is gonna be a very fundamental cut. So the thing I really love about it is that you're gonna get a lot of basics out of this cut, but then also we're gonna do some advanced stuff at the end to help detail it and finalize it. So now we're gonna talk about tension. There's no overdirection here. The tension is nice and light with my fingers, but I'm pulling it straight out from the head and cutting it at basically a 90 degree angle. Now that might confuse some of you guys out there, but we're taught in school that straight at this point, right at the occipital bone, that when we hold our fingers like that, we're creating a 45 degree angle. But in the reality, the occipital bone tucks down into the nape. So when it tucks down like that, it actually put forces my finger angle to be at 90 degrees. So I get more of a layered effect at this point. So that's why some people, when they're going through and they're cutting the hair, they see that they get that layered effect and then it stacks really uh, heavy right after the occipital bone. Well, we're gonna correct that in this cut. Also, I'm pushing weight forward. So I'm over directing everything to that very first uh, parting that we did. So you'll see in the overhead view, everything's being over directed to the center. So we're pushing almost like an A-line feel or triangular, depends on how you learned it. Um, but we're pushing that weight right to behind the ear. Now the other thing that I want you guys to be aware of and something that made me nervous when I first started cutting hair was as I cut this, you're gonna see kind of a fringier area, a little bit of extra length right at the nape. Um, I think it's cool to go in and cut your uh, weight out first and then draw that line in the dry cut. So I'm not worried about getting that hard line on the base right away. I wanna get it in the dry cut so then I can determine what length I actually want um, when I go in to cut it. Another thing that I've shifted, and we talk about this in multiple times in multiple different haircuts, but if you just started following the channel, um, I'm combing the hair differently. So the, on the left side, my fingers are pointing up and I'm pulling the hair into my hand. On the right side, my fingers are pointing down. And the reason for that is to stay consistent with your combing. Talk about it all the time. Uh, combing is what makes you a great hair cutter. It's not about cutting the hair off. So you can see my fingers are pointing down and I'm scooping the hair into my hand towards the center of the head. And I wanna make sure I keep that consistent on both sides. Now, the other thing is we're starting to build up weight now. So we were cutting at 90 degrees from the occipital bone down to the nape. But now that we're at the occipital bone up to the crown, I keep that same finger angle and now I start to build up weight. Now, I think what really separates great hair cutters from um, not so great hair cutters, I guess, or not, not, not so great, but hair cutters that just aren't fully understanding or thinking about what they're doing with the weight, you want to make sure that there's a balance of the weight on the head shape. So when I'm looking at this mannequin, for instance, I look at where do I want that weight to fall? I want the weight to fall right above the occipital bone. I want it to start building up there. That's going to give her the most flattering look for her head shape. 
And that's really the key to a great haircut. It's not about just being precise. It's not about getting the angles right. It's about where you're distributing weight in the head. On the head, not in the head. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going st still straight down center back. Now you'll see my fingers pointing straight up and I'm cutting my line, S sticking with my guideline from the center. So I grab a little bit of guide and then I move myself to the side. Still over directing everything to the center back. Another thing you might notice is that I'm holding my scissor a little bit different. Um, the reason that I hold my scissor this way is it's just more comfortable than kinking my wrist to try to cut palm to palm. So I shift, I put my thumb in the opposite direction of the scissor, and it just makes it more comfortable for me. That doesn't mean that you should do that. It just means that's what I like to do. Um, so if you would like to try it, uh, go ahead. I think that it gives me more consistency, and it also, um, as I've been cutting hair for more and more years, I like to keep my wrist as straight as possible uh, when cutting these different haircuts. So we're going through, still over-directing everything to the center. Now, you got to think about why you're overdirecting everything to the center. What's happening is we're pushing maximum amount of weight, a ton of weight uh, to behind the ear. The reason I'm doing that is because later I'm gonna go in and create a ton of texture and start cutting some layers in there, but I want a lot of hair to play with. The other thing that you're gonna notice is when this hair starts to drop, you may see a slight hole is what they teach you in beauty school, that it's a hole. It's not a hole because we're gonna go through and cut the perimeter later. What you're seeing is the differences in the outer perimeter of the haircut. Some of the hair is not gonna reach all the way down there. So just stay consistent with the interior part of the cut. Focus on that, where you want that weight to be, and then your outer perimeter is just the decoration uh, for the end of the cut. So still working the same thing. Uh, another thing to take notice of, when I'm cutting a bob, I'm shifting the head constantly. Uh, a question came up in a class that we just did uh, recently that was a hands-on class. The question was, um, if I shift my guest head, what does that do to the haircut? It does absolutely nothing to the haircut. A lot of people talk about, well, uh, if you shift your head down, you're going to get a different look than if the head is pointed up. The reason you get a different look is because when you shift the head, it shifts your um, your elevation, it changes uh, the thoughts in your mind. I right now have the head straight up and down because as I'm cutting, that makes me the most comfortable. Then there's some cases uh, at the very beginning where I tilt her head forward because that makes it more comfortable for me to get the angle that I was looking for. The more comfortable you are, the more consistent you'll be uh, is something that I say all the time uh, within haircutting because you want to be comfortable because the more comfortable you are, then you'll, you'll have consistent lines. You'll be able to find your guide. You'll be able to find all that. So staying nice and organized throughout the cut. So you can see now that I've worked my way all the way up to the top of the crown, if you went straight off the top of the head, the apex part of the head, the highest point, if I went straight up, that would be 90 degrees, right? So that top point where the tip of my finger is is actually sitting at zero degrees, which is a little bit heavier. So that's going to be my heaviest point. That's the point that I want to hit right at the occipital bone to help kind of accentuate uh, the nice shape of the head. You can see how it kind of bulks out right there, and that's why, and that's where I want it to be. Some people, you might want to put that a little bit lower. Some people don't have that occipital bone area as prominent, so what you'll do is you can build that weight line up a little bit and, and make the illusion of uh, a nice occipital bone or a nice head shape. You can see that weight pushing forward. And again, we're going to go in and layer it. So right now I'm creating a more fundamental haircut. This is a cut that you probably learn in beauty school. And then we're going to go through and we're going to detail it, and that's what's going to change it. I think the challenge um, with haircutting is that a lot of people learn these fundamentals, and they don't learn the tricks to do uh, in the dry cut to make it their own. So you see people walking around with these fundamental unfinished cuts. Um, so... That's what I really want to focus on that at the very end. So there you go. Lots of weight pushed to the front. We're not going to leave all that weight there, but it's nice to push things uh, to have hair to cut later. So somebody said a long time ago, I don't know who it was, but they said, um, you know, it's not about the hair you cut off. It's about the hair that you leave on. And what I take from that is, it is about the hair that you leave on. If I push weight to the front, I need to know why I'm pushing it there and how much weight am I pushing. Uh, right now, like I said, we're pushing a maximum amount of weight, so 
Now, then I can go in at the end of the cut and layer it and have a lot of fun with it, create a lot of texture because I'll have plenty of hair to work with. Um, I don't need to go in and take those layers out right now because sometimes it's more fun to do that in a dry cut because you can be a little more precise with how much texture you want to put in. Sometimes when you cut wet, the hair bulks together, uh, kind of sticks together, and then you're cutting more bulk out than you even want to, and you get chunkier looking layers. When you cut dry hair, it spreads out. It gets softer. So that's one of the things I like about dry hair cutting is being able to go in there and just really customize uh, and fine tune the haircut. So this is finishing up the precision point of the cut. Now I'm gonna go in with the Paul Mitchell Mirror Smooth High Gloss Primer. The thing I love about this product is it's definitely lightweight. Um, so when I'm putting it in the hair, I'm looking for that shine. I'm not looking for much hold. I just want the smoothness of the product. So you're gonna see how shiny it gets right away. I'm also using the Ergo Diamond Paddle Brush and I just work the product into the hair. I'm using a flat wrapping technique, which is basically molding the hair to the head shape. And then I use the Paul Mitchell Express Style Hot Off the Press. I love this product for, um, this is definitely one of my all time favorite heat protectant products because it goes on dry. Um, it's not a wet spray. And then it has a nice little medium hold and so you get the hair nice and smooth, but also get that protection. It's also great, those of you guys out there that maybe aren't hairdressers, get us getting inspired by the video. Uh, it's great for not only protection, but also it's humidity resistant. So in those hot summer days, um, you can put it on there. So now we're gonna go in, I'm using my Mizutani Type K uh, scissor. This is a five and a half inch scissor. I like using a shorter scissor for all precision cuts. I've used this scissor for this entire cut, and I'm going in with the tip of the scissor to start cutting my hard line. Now, when we talk about hard lines, it's a nice, strong line that you're creating in the back. A lot of people try to create these lines by uh, doing it in the wet cut, but I love doing it in the dry cut because you can really fine tune, decide what you want that line to look like, and get really creative with it. Then after I use the tip of my scissor, I'll go in with the blade flat just to, to really uh, harden the line to get it really strong. Uh, and then I go back in with the tip of the scissor and then I comb the hair some more. This is a process that I'll spend about 10 minutes on um, going through and cutting and, and defining that line. You could even spend longer, but I know in salon reality, we can't do that. But um, this is really the trick that I think a lot of people skimp on this because they either just don't have the time or didn't know uh, that that's what people were doing, like I didn't. Um, but now, you know, I block out enough time in my haircuts to make sure that I can put those final details in uh, to get the look that I'm looking for. And then now I'm going to go through and I'm doing point cutting technique, just softening the edge. This isn't so much right now about changing the shape at all. I just hold the hair directly out and I look for bulky points and I go in vertically with the blade and soften that edge. Just skinnying up the look a little bit. So we'll do that all the way through the head shape. Everything's coming uh, straight out from, the, from where it lives. So nothing is really being over directed at this point. Do the same thing on the opposite side. You can see how deep I'm going in there. I'm not going too far um, because I'm not really trying to create those layers yet. I'm gonna do that on the top, but I'm just going in and taking the bulk out of the side. Remember, we did over direct everything straight back. So in doing that, you're pushing so much weight to the front and you don't wanna get that dog ear effect. Now I'm going through and I'm gonna cut the blunt bangs. And the way I'm gonna do that is scoop it up, hold it in my comb at a low elevation. So I'm about maybe a half an inch from the forehead. And I just go in and I cut my first line and then I just keep fine tuning it. As I slowly drop the comb down, I keep cutting and it just gives me a little soft feel when it finally drops down to the forehead. So this is a technique that uh, I learned a long time ago. Really love this technique for cutting a straight fringe, works really well. You just keep going through, you hold it with your scissor, put it into the comb, and then just lightly use the tip of the scissor to go through and define the line. So again, you can see I'm using the tip of the scissor. I don't think I mentioned, but 
when you use the tip of the scissor, it's great because it doesn't push the hair. So a lot of people will go in and try to really cut with the full blade. And especially when you don't have sharp scissors, it pushes the hair and then you end up with a crooked line that you didn't want in the first place. So you can see when I want to straighten that line out, I use the tip of the scissor and that helps soften that line and get it exactly where I want it. All right, so we got our nice hard line. Now I'm gonna go in and do really deep point cutting throughout the very top, and that's gonna give me that shattered effect in the layering. So I really love how um, there's the hard lines in this cut, but then it's just really textured. Um, so that's one of my favorite looks uh, for the haircut. I love seeing that precision feel, but then a lot of shattered uh, pieces around it. So another thing that I like to do is uh, on this particular cut, I wanted to go through and cut and connect those lines. I didn't want it all falling forward. So then I leave those disconnections to kind of fall over it, which I really liked. I mean, obviously this, this part becomes a little less salon friendly, but it's fun and creative to do it. So I keep that triangular feel. It's still got a little bit of a forward feel to it, but then disconnect it over the top. This would be cool for curly hair, I think, as well. Um, having those disconnections really separates the shape a bit and could give you a little more texture and take out some density. So just really fun haircut. Hope you guys like the finished look. I'm gonna finish it up, blow it dry. I'm gonna throw a little bit more product in there as well. A um, Little more point cutting through it to finalize it out. And then I throw on the Mirror Smooth High Gloss Primer from Paul Mitchell and the Awapui Wild Ginger. So throw that in, gives it that shine, a little bit of separation. Again, not too much hold, still a soft feel to the look. Uh, but see the texture pieciness, I really like it. Hope you guys like this cut. I love doing it. Um, let me know in the comments below what you think. Thanks so much. All right, guys, like always, I hope you liked the video. Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you get a chance, I would really appreciate it if you just share this video with your friends. If you're on Facebook, share it in a hairdresser group so that we can pass these videos along to as many hairdressers as possible. Thank you guys again for watching. If you wanna get any of the tools that you saw used on this video, go to freesaloneducation.com and you can shop our online store. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you soon.